Wow. Ooh. And then I How will exciting. be up actually south of Grace. I'll be south of Grace on uh, Thursday for another shoot in Winston, Oregon. So oh, I will be a road warrior this week. Oh, sorry, it's not closer. <laughs> I know. I'd stop and then say hi. Yeah. <laughs> what is Winston there? Uh, south of Roseburg. Oh, okay. It's, oh, yeah. it's halfway between uh, Eugene and Medford, I believe. Yeah. Somewhere well, like that. Roseburg is halfway between Eugene and Medford. So it's just. Oh, there you just, go. Uh, just south. South of there. It's yeah. where the Animal Safari Park is. Uh, oh, yeah. I, yeah. Take that in, Kevin, if you have a few minutes or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a drive through. I would, I would love to. I don't know that there will be time on this draft, but I'll have to. I'll have to put that in the book for next time. Okay. Cool. Okay. Well, we're we're officially started. I started uh, recording it to the cloud. I don't know. I I haven't heard from Gene, and I haven't checked if he's actually getting it put on to the um, YouTube thing. But anyway, we're doing our part. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to ask uh, again, does anybody have a video to share with us this morning? Well, then guess I what, Brian? Yeah, Brian. Uh, so I've, we've got a real treat. Um, I asked Brian um, if he would consider uh, actually demonstrating how to use Audacity uh, for us this morning. And it uh, looks like you can definitely have a lot more than uh, 15 or 20 minutes. So, um, and uh, so um, you ready to go? Yeah, I don't know how much of a treat this is going to be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's audacity. Um, what we're, what we're going to do is um, it's a very brief introduction. We're not going to go into mind numbing detail. Uh, what we're going to do is just hit the, the elements of audacity that we use to do work on our voiceovers. And um, high level. It's, it's going to be very high level. We will we'll pause periodically for, for questions, but um, it's actually pretty simple. So um, I guess I guess the place to start is where do you get audacity since it's it's free? Well, okay. I'm glad you asked. Uh, Sherry, would you Sherry? like to spotlight Je uh, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just I was typing a couple notes and then I thought, oh, I need to spotlight him just as you were speaking. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. okay. We don't need that. Okay. Once again, you find it on the Multimedia SIG website. Uh, on the software page, all the way down at the bottom is Audacity. Click on that and it takes you to the Audacity web page. And you follow the directions, follow the directions from there. And that's all we need to say about that. No, minimize. Let me get rid of this. Okay, uh, let's jump right into Audacity. Here's, uh, oh, and for anybody that hadn't looked at it recently, uh, Audacity has recently uh, upgraded or gone to a new version. This is 3.0. It's a little different from the earlier versions. So some of the controls and procedures that you'll find in YouTube how-to videos are a little bit changed but uh, we'll, we'll stumble through this. Uh, up here on the, the very top of it is a menu bar like you find on just about all uh, Windows applications, file, edit, select. Uh, right below that, uh, can everybody see my cursor moving on the screen, I hope? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, pause, play, stop jump to the beginning of the clip, jump to the end and the record button, which we'll come back to. Here's another one that uh, you'll use a lot. This is the, uh, it's the select, 
uh, tool. And uh, we'll be showing you what that does here in just a little bit. Now, here's a really cool one, the recording level. Uh, do you see that green bar jumping up and down there? This monitors what is going into your mic and into the system. Uh, we're going to stop talking here for just a second. You see how it drops way down there? That's the ambient noise level in the room where we're located. If the air conditioner was running, it would be it would be higher. That's the noise you're going to have to deal with if you're recording um, uh, voiceover anywhere. Uh, this is output, the, uh, the playback level. Uh, you can you can adjust that. Uh, here is going back over here, the zoom tool that lets you zoom in on sections of uh, your recording. Timeline. Uh, oh, yeah, on the timeline of the recording. Uh, this one lets you set the input levels on your on your mic. You can turn it. And here it is all the way back up. Uh, we'll come to some of these a little later on. This one right here, um, when you first start using it, uh, you want to set yours probably to MME. That's, that's a good default. We only use this one because that's got to do with our, our, our interface from the mic to the computer. Uh, this is your input. See, you can use the, the webcam, your mic setup. Uh, if you have uh, mics, uh, a mic on your headphones. And here's your output, how you can listen to your, uh, uh, your clips. This area is the timeline. We'll, we'll see that in a minute. All the way down here at the bottom, project rate. This is the number of samples per second of your recording. The, the higher the number, generally, the, the more detail you're going to have. But above 48,000, is that's way beyond what most of us are doing. Uh, 44,100 seems to be a good default to use for just about any voiceover work. Um, where is he? Gary, you're, you're a good sound guru also, and uh, you probably ought to be given this. So, so if you, uh, if something we say goes, whoa, 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 what did he say? Wave at me or come up and, and uh, we'd be happy to, to hear what you have to say. All right. Okay, thanks. Um, <clears throat> This is uh, start and end of whatever you have selected. And this is the where your playhead is on your timeline. All right. Um, let's, um, let's go real quick over how to record a voiceover on this. Go back up here to uh, the record. You hit that and things are going to start happening on your oh, recording. You're recording. Oops. All right. I'm going to pause that right there. So you can see the waveform. Um, that means that you got something, which is always a good thing. And um, yeah, uh, thank you. One good thing, let me all right, see the selection tool. We're going to select that and hit the delete key and start over. One thing you want to do when you're starting to record voiceover is record four seconds of nothing. You're picking up, uh, you're just going to have the ambient noise in the room. And we'll uh, show you how to use that to get rid of noise in your recording. So you just hit the, the generate button or the record button and just sit there for a second. And then you can start talking. Pause button. We'll come back to that. Just wanted to show it to you. Okay. Um, are there the meters, the fourth row? No, on the meter, the yellow and the red. Oh, good. Here's something else. The, okay. this, um, this meter up here, what it does is it records, uh, the, it shows you what's going into your system but it also lets you know when you're getting in trouble. 
You want it to stay green. You would like to record somewhere between about 18 to maybe minus eight or nine uh, dB. But I'm going to deliberately uh, get stupid here. Okay, you see how that's, that's about where you want it to be. What you don't want to see is this, okay? You have, uh, you've peaked your, your input there. This is, this is just noise above zero dB and it's going to be just, just fuzz and ugly to clipped. listen to. Clipped. It will be clipped. Yeah, that's, that's clipping. Anything above zero dB, which is right here, is, is what we call clipping. And I know um, some of you may have heard us use that phrase when people play their videos. And if there's a fuzz, there's a, there's a rattle. It's like, it's like cranking those old 1960 speakers all the way up to 10 and listening to the buzz as uh, Led Zeppelin plays. Brian, yeah. got a quick question. Uh, on the waveform that you've got there, it's to me, sometimes I'll try to make them bigger, but not so big that they'll clip and it tends to have a little stronger uh, volume and, and other things coming through. If I make them small, that waveform like you're showing there, it doesn't seem to have the strength that I was looking for. Is that true? And we're going to show you how to fix that here in just a few minutes. Okay, let's get rid of that and get rid of this. Now we recorded a um, we recorded a clip earlier, and we're going to work with this. All right, this entire thing here is one audio track because we're using. Are they picking me up on that? Uh, we're using a mono microphone, so it's only going to record the left side or the right side doesn't matter when you mix it down and export your final recording you'll you'll get it through um, but you must have a stereo setting yeah so that's what shows on the screen yeah this is a, a stereo uh, setting and you set that in uh, setup but default is you're going to get this stereo setting okay uh, first thing we want to do is noise reduction we uh, Remember that four seconds up front? This is ambient noise, and it could be um, the air conditioner running. It could be the fan running in your desktop computer or your laptop. Um, it could just be the air moving through, through your house. It's unwanted noise in your recording, so you want to get rid of that. And the way you do that is you highlight you show them how to do that? We're getting ready to do that. Another highlighter. Okay, to, to highlight, um, here's the selection tool that you find right here. You put it on the thing, you hold down the left mouse button and drag it across, let go. And now that part is selected. To get to uh, do noise reduction under effect, up there on the top menu, you come down to noise reduction. Click on that, you see this screen. These are the defaults on this, but the thing you have to do is get noise profile. Uh, this is putting the picture on the post office wall. You have identified the noise that you want to get rid of. Then you come, then you have to select everything. Now there's a couple of ways to do that. You can drag the selection bar all the way across or you can go to select up there and say all, or you can just double click on it and it selects everything. Lots of ways to, to get there. But once you have the entire clip selected, you go to effect, you go back down to noise reduction and you go to step two. Uh, this is the amount that it's gonna reduce. This is how sensitive, uh, the software is to picking up noise, unwanted noise, and frequency smoothing bands. Don't worry about that. Just take the default. So we're going to reduce the noise, and we're going to hit OK. And nothing happened up there on the timeline. That's because this is this is very small effect, but overall, 
it helps. All right, we've done that. We no longer need this thing up front. So we select it, highlight it, and we hit the delete key and it goes away. We got a little extra there on the end. We can get rid of that too. Select it, delete, goes away. Okay, um, noise reduction, remove ambient noise. We did that. Okay, Brian, now, yes. Brian, if there had been a discernible noise, when you hit that delete the noise, would that line have become just a straight line without peaks? Which line? The, this the, whole thing? That, the, fir the first four seconds that you picked as the yes. noise. Yes, ideally it would end up just being a flat nothing line. Okay. Um, we didn't have enough ambient noise. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't have enough ambient noise here in the room to, to really show there. Now, one thing I guess we ought to jump back and talk about on, on ambient noise, if you've got a dog barking in the background, that's not ambient noise. Those are transients. And this might reduce it a little bit, but to get that dog barking out of the entire clip, it's really gonna sound funny. Uh, that's, that's not what it's for. So don't go there. You gotta set up your environment better to where you're not gonna hear a dog barking. Or you gotta start over because the dog barking ruined your recording. <laughs> that applies Brian? to car door slamming, trucks <clears throat> blowing their horns. Stuff Brian, like that. Yeah. I have a question. Where yeah. you showed the clippings and it showed up as red bars, can you erase just those red bars and preserve the audio beneath it? Yes, yes, you can. We're going to get to that down here uh, in just a minute. But because it clipped all the data uh, in your recording that was above that line is lost. It was when, lost yeah, it was lost from the very beginning. It's just not there. So when you uh, do a uh, equalization, um, it, when, you, when it shrinks down all the way into what you're seeing here, it's gonna be a flat top across there instead of these, uh, let me blow this up. Come on. Okay, instead of, instead of these, these uh, sharp up, up and downs, it would just be like a, like a, it would be like the mine tailings out here. Instead of a mountain peak, it's just a flat thing across the top. That's how you can tell that uh, it was clipped. Did that answer the question? Yes. Okay. So uh, let's get the entire thing showing again. There. Okay, right up here where the thing is, fit project to width, that gets the entire thing showing again on your thing. So you don't have to use the zoom in and out. Of my own. Oh. We have an oxygen tank going off. <laughs> Stand by. Okay, just give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. It happens. Okay. Um, selecting the whole thing. We've reduced noise. And uh, okay, the next thing we're going to do is the compressor. What the compression does is it reduces loud sounds and enhances soft sounds for a smoother overall sound. You find the compressor in effects. And there it is. When you click on that, this is the default. You can play with these uh, controls, but for the most part, if you take the default, you're going to be okay. On all of these things, we're going to generally stick to the default. This is something that you need to play with to, to figure out what it's going to be doing for you. So let's just take the default and hit, okay, watch the, the waveform up there. Boom, it, it changed it. It's, um, you know, I'm going to back up and we're going to play just a little bit of this. Too hard to reach your box. You'll lose them. Too okay, and now we're going to compress it.
too hard to raise your arm. Doesn't really show that. It doesn't really show, does it? Trust me, when you add all of these together, there's going to be a noticeable difference in the before and after. There's, there's another place where playing with um, these, these controls is, is useful in learning the controls. Change this a lot, play it, bring it back the other way, play it. That's how, that's how we became accustomed to messing with this stuff. But to be fair, we, didn't, we haven't used Audacity very much up until now because we were using Adobe Audition, which has got all of this and, and more, but and it's a monster and it costs too damn much money for the subscription <laughs> over time. All right, canceling. Next step, equalization. This boosts or reduces selected frequencies to change the overall sound, to uh, get a more natural sounding voice. Show of hands, how many people like the way your voice sounds when you play back your recording? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. So um, let's go to, what, what are we on? Equalization. There's a couple of equalization uh, EQs in the new uh, Audacity. One of them is a graphic, looks like this, and you you really have to be a uh, hopeless. It's that slider board. Yeah, you know, the, the, whenever you see the rock stars in the recording studio and you've got this huge board and guys sliding stuff all over, that's what they're messing with is the equalization. But we're, we've got a, a one that's easier to use. Um, there we go. Um, let me take this back to factory presets, defaults. Okay, this is a flat response. This is your old 1960s uh, stereo turntable in the corner that had a treble uh, knob and a bass knob. This is with those knobs set at zero. You haven't changed it at all. What they've done that we find really nice is you can go to manage factory presets. Here are some, uh, well, presets that let you change the way your thing sounds. Before we do this, let's preview the sound. You chose that font, really? Okay, so now let's pick, pick one. This one is to mimic the sound of AM radio. Now what's happened here is it's got a high pass and a low pass filter applied. High pass means it suppresses the stuff at the very bottom of the frequency spectrum, the real deep, deep bass. Why would we want to do this? Because too much of this can muddy your sound. Um, it's one of those very small differences, but significant overall. So what this does is it suppresses that low end and lets everything above it through. High end, uh, or high pass filter, sorry, a low pass filter means it suppresses the high end and lets everything below that through. This is the sound it's letting through. Why would we wanna suppress the high end? There's noise up there. It doesn't really contribute. And when you think about it, this is 10,000 uh, hertz. Human hearing, even for kids that are phenomenal, you know, they can hear flies thinking, you know, is up there at 20,000 hertz. I don't think I can even hear anything above 12. Wife. You can't hear anything above wife. <laughs> Susan says, I can't hear anything above wife. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you're not going to miss it by taking that out, but it will make a difference. So let's hear it. Let's listen to what this sounds like. You chose that font? Really? Too much of a gap. I can't yeah. Stop. Okay. Um, I'm really not sure. Let me see. Uh... No. 
Um, I'm not sure if you can actually hear the differences. So let's let's pick uh, another one. When you went to share, did you click the share audio thing? Let's see. Viewer screen sharing. We're going to pop out of um, out of screen share and go right back in to make sure that we've got the right buttons clicked. Screen share. Share screen. No, there we share go. Share sound. Share sound. Optimize. That's why you hit me. Yeah. So we'll we'll see if this makes a difference. You chose that font, really? I don't know if that, uh, that comes through, so we'll take one more. Much better, Brian. Much better. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, let's try RIAA, Recording Industry Association Standard. Very different. It's very different looking, so let's, let's see what that sounds like. You chose that font? Really? That's a, that's a little more mellow sound, isn't it? Okay. Um, Brian, yeah. do you have a reverb? Yes, there's reverb in here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click this. See how that changed that up there? Uh, reverb is uh, right there. We don't use it. So, okay, uh, we've done noise reduction. We've compressed it. We've equalized it now. This goes back to the question that Jim had, normalization. This applies a constant amount of gain in order to bring the peaks up to a target level. So let's go find our normalization. That's right here. The only one that you really need to worry about is this one right here in the middle, normalize peak amplitude two. You to make the apparent loudness of your clip uh, the loudest, you know, you could put 0.0. .0. That's bumping right up against clipping. We really recommend not doing that. We like to use minus 3.0. That gives us a little bit of space uh, to, to work with. Yeah, you can go up to minus 1.5. We really recommend minus 3.0. Let's push the button and watch what happens to the waveform. That's how you get your loudness, Jim. And uh, no matter how high you turn your volume, uh, the only limitation on what you're going to be hearing is the ability of your speakers to handle the volume, but you're not going to lose any of the data that you've recorded in your voiceover. Brian, one other question. I know sometimes in photography, you can set up some defaults where it'll have a whole bunch of different changes and you're locking it into that. So everything is applied to that no matter what you do. Can you do that with sound? Like you may have the same voice and the same recording situation all the time. So all these changes that you might be making here and showing us, you would set up as some kind of a default and just apply it instead of going through and making all these things over again. I'm, I'm going to say uh, maybe. <laughs> Google it. We just go through the steps because you can go through this in less than five minutes. And uh, hey, we're, we're retired. We've got time to kill. Yeah, that's a good point. It does reinforce uh, what you're doing. And I don't know about you, but my voice is not the same from one day to the next. So I might want to make some adjustments uh, as I'm going. That's what that, uh, that preview button is really good for. Okay. Um, yeah, we're down two. Now, a note on, uh, on recording. There's, there's two ways to do your voiceover and get it into your video. One, uh, which we see a lot here in the SIG, is uh, folks play the video and watch it. And as they watch it, they're recording their voiceover so that they get the, uh, they get their script lined up with where they want it to be in the video. Um, 
some people are very, very good at this, and some people struggle a little bit. Uh, it, it's wooden. You've got uh, issues with, darn, I missed that. And you have to start over, or they just leave it wherever it ends up. Don't know. Um, we don't we don't like to do that. We tried that a long time ago and just said, yeah, it's not the way to go. Um, nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. Like I said, some people are very good at it, and you can get better at it with practice. Uh, we prefer to record the voiceover straight through, just like you see it uh, here on the timeline with no, a recorded. couple of gaps, uh, pauses to give us a good way to where we can chop it up. And we chop it up and we move the chunks around on the timeline to match where we want it to be on the video. So here's how we do that. We select, we do a cut, and that's um, control, uh, control, Control X, X. and <laughs> then we um, set the selector tool out there, Control V. Now we've got it as a chunk that we can see this, uh, this one right here, the time shift tool, you click on that and you can move that around. So here's 55 seconds on the timeline. We move that to 55 and there it is. This is just arbitrary, yeah. And yes, it takes a little time because you got to select, control X, move it, control V. You saw where when I did control X, what it did was it removed that chunk of the timeline world out and this jumped down to, down to here. Well, when you hit control V and you put it back in, it pushes this back to where it needs to be. And then you move this. Brian, I got, I've got a question. Uh, you yeah. you collected some sounds or a bunch of words or a paragraph or something, and you're going to try to put them into the video uh, where they match up with the content of the pictures, right? And as a result of that, uh, that means you have to save each one of these things as individual uh, sound bites. Is that true? No, it's not. And we're going to show you here in just a minute how to get around that. Uh, and what we're going to do to do that is um, we're going to shrink this one so we don't beat you to death for the next 15 minutes. And we're gonna bring this one in where we have already matched the position of the sound bites to the position in the, in the video. Um, and have, Brian, did you did do that by looking at the time on the video the, exactly where the time was that you wanted and then that's where you placed them along the time here yes what we did was we we had the the video well it's easier with the two screen setup we had the video on one screen and audacity on the other we would play through the video hit pause look at the time and then move the um, move the sound bite around to match the time where we wanted it. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Or you could do it also by, by playing your video, hitting pause at the right spot and writing down the time. But that's, it's just how you want to approach it. But this, these little sound bites here are now at the spot we want them in the video. Sound and the video into your editor and bring it Why why go through all of this? If you have a uh, a little more advanced video editor, you could do all of this in um, your video editor. You wouldn't have to mess with this. There's a number of people using video editors that have a single audio track, and that's going to get important when you go to add in music. You can't do voiceover and music, which are two separate tracks in a single audio track. So we're gonna do that right now. We're going to bring some music in. Uh, we're gonna import. 
fix some audio. And when we do that, it adds in another track automatically. So um, the issue here is now becomes one of, of ducking. And I know you've heard us talk about ducking. Ducking is when you decrease the volume of the music when the voiceover is talking so that they're not competing at the same uh, audio level. Music goes to the background, the, uh, the voiceover comes to the foreground in essence. Yeah. Now we don't need all of this music in the particular track that we're going to be doing. So I'm going to, I'm going to kill some of it off the end there. Then we're going to show the entire thing. The, let me expand this. The thing about auto decking with um, Audacity is that it wants the music above the voice. So you have to move the voice track. Just put your cursor over here in this section, hold down the left key, see so it turn into a hand, and you just pull it down and it'll switch the two. For people that have been doing manual ducking for years, this next part is especially nice. Select the entire audio track, double click, control A, whatever. And once again, up to our old friend effects. And right up next to the top, auto duck. Now what this screen is, it shows the level of music here and we're gonna duck it minus 12 dB underneath its original level. You can change that by moving this up and down. And this is something that you might wanna uh, play with because some voice types and some music, 12 dB is not enough. So you need to duck it more um, or less. Um, this right here, this is the attack on, on the ducking. The music is playing here. You could set it to this where the music is playing at this, this level and the instant that the voice comes on, it, it slams it down. Not, it, it doesn't sound good. Give it a little bit of, let it smooth, uh, you know, okay, just yeah. slide underneath there and then slide out from under. It's less abrupt, it'll sound better. And here's ways that you can set those manually, but I, I do like the, uh, the auto, the, the visual up here. Uh, these on a video editor would be called keyframes. So let's duck this and watch watch the uh, the music up here, the waveform. Pretty uh, pretty obvious what's going on there. Okay. Um, well, it's okay. Okay, so now we're at the point where we're ready to, to mix down. Um, mix down is just combining the two together. And to do that with a export, file export, uh, there's things you have to download and add to your PC to export as an MP3. Don't need to, just export it as WAVE. come up here in a second. Where is it? There. And um, give it a name. Hit enter and it, it tells you it will be mixed on and exported as one stereo file. That's the default. Yep. Click OK. Here is where you can put information in about your, your, um, your audio file. 
we're just going to say okay and, and move on past that. Now we are ready to go to the next step, which is putting it into your video. Unless you're using exactly the same software hardware setup we are, your screen is going to look different. What we're using is um, DaVinci Resolve and in the media pool where you get the material that you're going to put on your timeline, we import media. We go get the audio file that we just created. There it is. And then we put it on the timeline. It only uses one audio track because you combined those two, the music and voiceover, into a single track when you did the mix down. At this point, the only thing we we want to do is uh, do a little bit of fade on the music at the end, and it's you're done. You go to um, it's hiding underneath this material. There it is. We move that out of the way. Um, the next step is to export it out into um, uh, render it to your your finished video. I'm not going to make you sit here for several minutes and watch that. What you get is this. <laughs> You chose that font? Really? Sometimes people don't put much thought into choosing a font for their video. They choose fonts based on what they like or for their novelty. But choosing the wrong font detracts from your video. If the audience has to work too hard to read your font, you'll lose them. So here are some simple rules. Use fonts with relatively even stroke weight. Use fonts that contrast with the background. Sans serif generally works better for video. And clarity is preferable over style. Okay. Um, you can back up your picture or stop sharing. Stop sharing. There we go. Oh, that was very informative. Brian, I have a question. Yep. If you were recording outside and you had wind blowing across your microphone, how would you take that out? Um, you go inside. <laughs> You choose a better microphone, a different microphone. Gary, your sound is off. Thank you. Yeah, I thought I heard you. I thought I saw you saying something there. That's why. No, I was coughing, sorry. Oh, <laughs> um, I had it off. I'll get the mic. Um, we we had that exact issue one time and the, the video was great, but the, the noise from the freeway out there, it was not good. So we, we got a mic. So Brian bought toys. See, your questions cost him to spend money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, doesn't the foam cover over the mic help some? Yes, it helps. It helps some. But um, particularly when you have a lot of wind or a lot of uh, freeway noise or whatnot, you get a shotgun mic. Yes, you can put, uh, you know, the foam cover over or put a dead cat over that, the big fuzzy, fuzzy things. But you're going to have to use a shotgun mic to get rid of that wind noise. You can't take it out in editing? You can take some of it out in editing, but it's wind noise over mic covers such a 
a wide range on the frequency spectrum that when you take that noise out, what you're going to be left with, you're going to find unacceptable. Gary, jump in. Yeah, um, what you're saying is correct. And really the best effective uh, wind noise reduction, a dead cat works better than a foam um, cover, but even better than that is a blimp. Uh, usually done on the end of a, uh, of a mic boom. The blimp includes all of the uh, protection from wind and also integrates a uh, shock mount. So you get the best, best uh, sound from both worlds doing that. Yeah, we, we're not getting one. Did you hear that? <laughs> no. We're not getting one. <laughs> no. Um, there are a couple things I wanted to add to you. I think your presentation was excellent, Brian. We covered all the bases very well. Uh, I would make one comment that uh, when digital recording, which is what most of us are going to be doing, the industry standard is to have the, uh, the average levels between minus 18 and minus 12. And I would also recommend recording at 48K if that's available because it's much like doing uh, editing and photography. You like to edit at a higher resolution and then export to uh, the lower resolution, depending on your use going out. Audio is the same way. And the standard for export is 44.1, as you said. So if you're recording at 48, you have a little bit more leeway in terms of your editing uh, resolution. And regarding compression, <clears throat> Um, generally for dictation or narration, uh, the need for compression is a little less because you don't have the high dynamic range that you would have if you were using uh, recording a instrumentation or a group singing or uh, music playing. Uh, however, you may have to use it on, on the, uh, the sound bed that you're using in addition to the dictation. So that might require some compression as well. But using, starting off with at least the, uh, the defaults uh, is a good starting point. Uh, compression is a little bit of a learning curve. And I think the best thing is if you wanna learn more about it, there are some really good videos online and YouTube that explain the three basic uh, controls for compression, which is the ratio, uh, the, uh, uh, the level in which compression takes effect and then another what's called uh, gain resolution. So those three items are the, the basic needs for compression. Yeah, I, I do miss the multiband compressor that uh, is in Adobe Audition. I, I loved that thing, but ha haven't uh, found a replacement for it. Yeah, the multiband is, is definitely a, a nice tool, uh, but again, you need to understand how it works in order to use it effectively. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, the uh, telescope microphone you showed to get rid of wind, how would you use that with an iPhone? With an iPhone? Mm -hmm. Grace. Oh, you're <laughs> I see Grace up there shaking her head. What you're going to have to do is record. Um, onto a, uh, a tape recorder, something like the H4N. Or, then, to, or to your iPhone uh, voice memo. Uh, <laughs> well, there is a little mini mic that you can plug into an iPhone that has a foam cover on it. There is one. Yeah, there's small <laughs> shotgun mics available for the iPhone use, but again, like Brian was saying, the best is to uh, use one and, and plug it into uh, a separate recorder like a Zoom or a Tascam. And then that gives you much better quality audio in the run and something you can really work with in Audacity. Mm -hmm. But if push comes to shove, you can use one of the small pencil size uh, shotgun mics that plug directly into uh, the iPhone or into a smartphone. Okay. Yeah, I have one around here somewhere. But... Um, um, tutorial recommendations. There are a couple of guys on the internet and YouTube that do 
pretty decent job at uh, explaining uh, parts of um, Audacity. We will uh, pick a couple of those out and we will put them on the Multimedia SIG website under educational resources. Um, we'll add that on there within the day or two if you want to go watch those. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Sherry, Sherry, I told you it would take a little more than 15 minutes. <laughs> it was so great. I, thank you. <laughs> And um, thank you, Gary, uh, for your additional input and uh, everyone's questions. I, I felt like um, because we're um, not having a lot of people uh, doing videos, then, um, then I've been kind of reaching out to some different ones to, to actually get this kind of experience, um, you know, to, to try uh, to get exposed more than just conversation. So I, I'm really grateful that, um, that you guys were willing to do this. And um, I know it's not, you know, it's my, my thoughts is just to help introduce us more to see what it looks like, you know, a little bit on how it works, recognizing that, you know, it could be a, a much bigger class and have a series of things on it. But what did you guys think? Did, is that is that something that's of interest to you? Because I mean, it's, you know, it's all of our meeting, so I don't want it just to be out of my head. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I, I, that's fine. Oh, okay. the, the, the multimedia SIG goes through, through cycles of lots of videos, lots of classes, lots of videos. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Otherwise, we just sit here for an hour and stare at each other. So. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's wow. a happy hour. You're in charge. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. I, I thought it was really helpful just to actually see how it works. Uh, obviously, you have to go get it and and play with it. Uh, but um, how much is it? Free. Free. <laughs> Got Free. it. <laughs> <laughs> Free is a good word. <laughs> Do you find the new version worth the effort? I've been working with the same one for a few years without any real problems, but is it worth uh, getting? It? They claim that it's fixed uh, a number of obscure bugs in the old one. So yeah, I would get the new one. Yeah, it doesn't lose any functionality. I'm not going to Yeah, unlike, uh, <laughs> unlike uh, Premier Elements, which uh, you, f you find guys like Larry with four or five versions of it because it adds things and drops things. So this this seems to be pretty uh, pretty stable. We haven't we didn't have any problems with it. What's the version number again? The new one. Three point oh. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, next. Uh, the next couple weeks, Grace is going to be hosting for us because uh, I'll also be traveling. And um, I'm thinking we can right. wrap it up unless there's more conversation that we want to have. We've got about five more minutes before I need to sign off. <laughs> have a good trip, all yep. of you people who are traveling. So, Sherry, I need to know, uh, are you signing off promptly because somebody's coming right behind you to use the account? I try to. I can't say that I'm 100%, but I'll, I always try to, uh, to get signed off and putting it back into my name. But, but is there somebody following? So it's urgent that you do it. Oh, I don't, I don't know that. I just okay. try to do that. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> um, but also it hasn't, to... yeah, and it hasn't been showing up in the uh, Green Valley listing. So I've been putting my, uh, I've been going in. Thank you, Brian. I've been going in as um, Green Valley and then I've been using the link on the email in order to um, come in as the host. 
oh, you're not coming in with the uh, password for the app. Yes. You, can't. you are. Oh, yeah, yeah, the email and the password, yeah. So I'm yeah. changing it out, you know, out of my account into the camera club account, right. but I haven't, but usually when I would uh, go into zoom to do that, then it would give the list of all of the different ones that are doing zoom right now. And our SIG isn't on that list anymore. I've asked Jean to put it back on, but um, it hasn't happened yet, but I was able to access it through the email then and just, you know, click on that. And then all of a sudden I'm in, so. Okay, I, the yeah, I just want to make okay. sure that I that there wasn't somebody backed up with another class to yeah. make urgent to get off, in other words. Well, okay, yeah, class, I don't know that class, answer. The next class through the club is at 1.30. Okay. okay. That's the only okay. thing that's listed. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Ron. Thanks. All right. All Have right. fun. Thanks. Okay, well, thank you guys. Have a good day. Bye bye. I'll see you uh, when you get back. Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.